Here is a more elaborate organization of the hardware resources inside a computer system with an I.O. bus and a system bus. And usually the system bus is a synchronous communication device between the CPU and the memory. The I.O. bus is primarily intended for the devices to communicate with the CPU. And the intent is that the individual needs of each of these devices in terms of the communication bandwidth that they may need is less than the cumulative bandwidth that may be available for the CPU to communicate with the memory. Or in other words, the system bus has a communication bandwidth that is much more than the communication bandwidth that's available in the I.O. bus. So the system bus is a high-speed bus, and it connects via a bridge to the I.O. bus. And this bridge itself could be a specialized I.O. processor for scheduling the devices that need to communicate with the memory, for instance, if it is a DMA device, or need to communicate with the CPU if it's a slow speed device. So the role of the bridge is like a processor in itself controlling who has access to this I.O. bus among the set of devices that may be competing at the same time for attention by the CPU and communicating the intent of these I.O. devices either directly with the memory or via the CPU. The I.O. bus is typically lower speed than the higher speed system bus, and the cumulative bandwidth that is needed on the system bus is usually much higher because it has to cater to all the clients that may want to access the memory either from the CPU or from any of these devices coming through this bridge. There may be other high-speed devices, for example, a frame buffer of a graphics display that may also be hanging off of the system bus due to the need for refreshing the screen in a rapid manner from the memory. So in a nutshell, if you look at the internal organization of a computer system, there are going to be one or more CPUs, whether it is a single core machine or a multi-core machine or a parallel machine and so on, you're going to have one or more CPUs and you're going to have a bunch of memory that the CPUs can access and there's going to be a whole number of input-output devices and device controllers that allow these devices to communicate with the CPU or directly with the memory. And there are conduits, system bus and I.O. bus, for connecting these controllers to the CPU as well as to the memory. Basically, these conduits allow ferrying data from the CPU to the devices, or from the devices to the CPU, and between CPU and the memory, as well as from the devices to the memory. This is why I mentioned earlier that there is no difference in the organization regardless of the platform specifics. The form factor may be different, or the intended use may be different of a particular platform, but the internal organization is pretty much going to look, as I've shown you here, in terms of the hardware elements that are going to be there, as well as the connectivity that you might see among these hardware elements.